The main thing I've taken away from working on this project over a number of years is how palliative care is quite a radical space and it's a hidden community that delivers extraordinary care and I think allows a person to be whatever they want and whoever they want at the end of their life. It's not just where you disappear out of society. There's a whole set of recalibration of relationships between the dying person and their, their nearest and dearest and their carers. It's a really important part of our lives that we really should be giving attention to. So the interval in the instant is a seven screen installation. Uh, it centers around a triptych, which is called the interval in the instant, which is a 50 minute loop. It introduces us to three people. It introduces us to the island, the Isle of Wight, and it shows us the transition from the home into the hospice and how, how the end of life unfolds. The triptych notionally has one screen associated with one person. So screen one is associated with Alan, a man who was 82 when he died. Screen two is associated with Jamie, a man who was 40 when he died. And screen three is associated with Roy, uh, a man in his early 70s when he died. These are very different deaths. Jamie had a young family. Uh, his, his immediate circle of friends and family were in shock. They weren't prepared. They couldn't comprehend why this was happening. Alan was in his early 80s. His wife had died not long before. He believed in the continuation of his consciousness after death. He had no attachment to his body. He was ready to die. He was absolutely excited by the prospect. The interval refers to this duration of terminal illness. You enter palliative care when it is understood that you probably have 12 months to live, although of course nobody can call that. But there is an understanding that w most of us manage a sense of uh, death is further away, how long have I got? But when we're given a terminal diagnosis, we, death becomes proximate and we have a sense of that interval, that time. The instant refers to, again, something which is contested, which is, well, what happens when we die? When is death named? And can it be seen, I suppose? So I was interested in whether or not I could be present at the moment of death. What would happen when I put that proposal on the table to institutionally, is it possible? I was also interested in whether it can be seen, because of course most of us would like to be present when our loved ones die, but it's very difficult for that to happen because death takes its own time. And even when it does happen, it can be missed because it isn't necessarily an image. So the instant refers to something which we culturally understand as being precise inside something which is expansive. In the entry space, uh, there's a smaller work called The Planets, which is a loop showing microscopic biopsies of cancerous cells. They are the most extreme close-up image you can get of the body because it's inside the body. But somehow by, by going close, we see something we see a landscape, they look like planets. In the parallel uh, back gallery space are two works. One is called One Day, The End of a Life, which is almost a five hour piece and it features in real time the end of Alan's life. And so this is a piece which shows us day to night. It's governed by breathing, uh, how breathing changes, becomes more urgent, becomes slower. And we, are, we see some nursing care, but essentially it is time spent with Alan uh, and it's projected very large. So we have, I think, quite an extraordinary sort of window into something intensely private and intensely intimate. And then at the back of the same gallery space, there's a piece called the Chapel of Rest, which is a shorter piece, which is with Alan in the Chapel of Rest in the coffin. Uh, and then we see the coffin lid closed. In 2012, 2013, we really began to kind of um, 
engage much more sort of concretely with this uh, idea of, of death and dying and commissioning, artists commissioning around it. When we selected all the, the three artist commissions that we really wanted to present as part of the Into That Good Night programme, Stevens seemed the most challenging ethically. I was fascinated by it, as were the palliative care professionals who said, there is no work that we know of that is proposing this. I think one of the things that was really intriguing about it was that taboo of, of putting somebody who is dying or just, you know, just died on screen. After the initial commission from Fabrica, I knew that I had to find partners. Nigel Hartley, who runs the Old Mountbatten Hospice, is a former musician and very interested in the relationship between art and palliative care. And so he, he really was instrumental in this artwork happening because he said, I want to support Stephen to have as much access as he needs. So uh, with the interval and the incident, the Macmillan nurses and the community nurses would broach the idea that an artist filmmaker was making a film to people with terminal illness, but I wasn't present. And then if they took an interest, I would go and see them, never take out the camera, have a discussion about what we could do, let them decide, and then come back with the camera if they wanted me to film. Because I threw a lot of time at it, that led to, I think, meetings of minds and meetings of of goals and ambitions. So I think the people that I ended up working with had as much of a need for the film to take place as I did. I didn't feel like I, sh I would ever impose my, my will. It was about m us both wanting to try something together. I can think of three particular moments that have stayed with me in the process. The first was Roy was very close to the end of his life and had made it known and his his partner also had made it known that it was fine for me to be in the room. Somebody can seem very close to death and then the next day they can be much more visibly well and that can keep changing. And it's incredibly hard to be with your loved one when they die because you might just decide to get back on that train and then they, they go. The team felt that Roy would probably live for another week and so I made an assessment to leave the island and he died the next day. I thought, well, perhaps this is what the artwork is about. It's about how sometimes wanting to be witness to something doesn't mean it will happen. The second thing that has stayed with me is how difficult it is working in this way to manage being overcautious and undercautious. So you might say, it would be inappropriate for me to film you doing that. And you might privately make that assessment without even asking that person. And actually, when it comes to terminal illness, I think that happens all the time. With Jamie, I felt this real tension between, am I being invasive, am I pushing, or am I keeping too far back and therefore doing him a disservice and not creating the, the image which I feel he deserves? And of course, when it comes to somebody being very close to the end of their life, with lots of people around them, it's very difficult to know whether or not you are pushing or not. The third thing that has stayed with me was how beautiful uh, a good death can be. When care is really attentive, pain is managed, when somebody has lived a long life and what you see is um, the gentle running out of a life, the, the end of breaths. And I saw that and I filmed that over two days. And I, th I found it very empowering. It had a beauty and it had a, an unspeakable quality. And I, I've, I'm very fortunate to, to have been invited to see that. And, and I found it strangely uplifting. It's really important to commission work like this because surprisingly there's very little uh, contemporary visual art which deals with this this theme of death and dying. I feel that cultural organisations should be exploring um, all aspects of, of human life and human thought. I think particularly because Fabrica operates from a redundant 
church that this was a, a really kind of um, rich area that we could explore and actually there's a sort of wider agenda attached to it which is about trying to look at death and dying in the face, um, trying to perhaps encourage a much more positive attitude towards engaging with this really important theme. So you may come into the artwork with uh, expectations and feel some sense of trepidation. Maybe I don't want to see this image. I think it's actually very much about everyday life. I think that we tend to think that death is somehow exceptional and different, but it's, it's absolutely everyday. And so I hope that being privy to something and being invited in, it's very important, I think, that the artwork communicates that these images were invited, or they were desired. And so I hope that the person coming into the space will understand that we don't need to be afraid or as afraid. <laughs>